For every season, there is an appointed time. In every story, there's a possibility. For every music, there is a sound. For every achievement, there was a dream. What is your dream? I am an African and I like to dream big dreams about Africa because I believe in Africa, we have enormous potentials and abundant resources yet untapped. In Africa, we have culture rich in diversity. There are leading lights, self-inspired winners, exceptionally talented youth and groundbreaking achievers. I believe we are special that Africa is the future of the world. I am Karifes Doche Sonyeka, an advocate for positive change and I'm on a quest for possibilities in Africa. We go where the story matters. Join me on this journey of possibilities with Karifest every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. on this station. Follow us online on social media at Karifest Doches hashtag Karifest TV. Possibilities with Karifest. Together, let's celebrate Africa. Actually, the path through which you are contesting is uh, becoming so unpopular, so to speak, because of the situation of things in the country. Do you see that as something that could pose as a threat to your aspiration? Yes, I have been a leader uh, all my life, you know, going back to my family structure. I grew up uh, taking very important decisions about the uh, family at, uh, at an age as early as 10 because of what happened to my family during the Civil War. So that's commendable. In the area of infrastructure, what are you thinking? What would you be working on? What would you be proposing? Well, you see the state of uh, the roads, for, the, for instance, in Nigeria are all dead traps and uh, I dread traveling by road in Nigeria. It's a very joyful day for me today because I have a brother here with me in the studio all the way from the United States of America. Wait till you meet who he is. Hello viewers, you're welcome to another episode of Possibilities with Carrie Fest. It's your darling host, Carrie Fest Duchess Onyeka. And on today's program, I have a special guest in the house. Please stay with us, we'll be right back. Possibilities with Carrie Fest. I have a special guest all the way from the United States of America, like I did say earlier on. He is an aspirant for an envious position in Nigeria. He is um, aspiring to become one of Nigeria's uh, senators. He is no other person than Mr. Smart Ajaja. So, you are welcome to the program. It's a pleasure. Nice meeting you, sir. It's a pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Um, we've heard so much about you, about your aspiration to be a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Am I correct? Yes. That's a very laudable one, I must say. Thank you. And I commend you for your courage. What inspired you into thinking of taking that booster? Well, the situation in Nigeria since the past uh, 20 years it's something I've been monitoring uh, for as long as they have been occurring. Uh, I've written volumes about the troubles uh, that are bedeviling Nigeria. I've spoken at length and I decided now that I, it's time for me to take action. And that is one of the reasons that I'm in the race to the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So why going for the Senate? Why not start from probably like um, um, House of uh, Assembly? You are from Delta State. Probably start from Delta State House of Assembly or as a chairman. Don't you think it, it would have been better for you to learn the stakes first before taking that giant step of aspiring to become a senator? Well, if you look at uh, the trends going on around the world now, I would think that uh, I made the right decision running for Senate. The president of France is not as old as I am. And uh, I don't think running for office is anything like starting a business where I have to start from one uh, little position to get to, to the top. Even if I have uh, the qualifications that are required for me to be anything. I think I'm a Nigerian and I have uh, <clears throat> the ability 
have the competency and have good content or character. I think those are the defining things that, that uh, leadership that is required of uh, the leadership of any country. I believe yeah. I can do it. Okay, you would agree with me that um, Delta State is a peculiar state. It's not just any state you go to and grab a leadership position. And you are well aware of the challenges that lie ahead. How are you prepared to cope with it or to tackle that? Yes, uh, the problem of Delta State uh, is very peculiar. Uh, Delta State is a microcosm of uh, Nigeria. In both, you know, uh, the the difficulties and uh, the positivities that are supposed to be of Nigeria, and you are aware that uh, since the past 20 years, the state has not fared better, and because of a tragic failure of leadership, I think there's need for a paradigm shift, a leadership driven by people with different. An alternative to the squalor that we have, we have come to recognize as leadership in that state. So we can drive the state for this and the next generation. Because I believe that uh, Delta State has become very progressive in thinking, in leadership, and in everything to the extent that uh, the future of the next generation is being put in jeopardy. It's time to do something alternatively to what we have been doing. Now, the incumbent senator in your local government, do I know your senatorial district, um, his name has just appeared on the list of blue stars in Nigeria. How does that affect your candidacy? Do you think that will increase your, chance, your chances of emerging as a winner? Well, before he was given that uh, ignoble position, what I mean by the current, his current rating, as one of those who looted Nigeria dry. I didn't think it was a, a challenge to my aspiration, but uh, what has just taken place has brightened my chance of uh, being uh, the new voice of uh, Delta North Senatorial District at the floor of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I will take advantage of it if given the chance by the people. Currently, the party through which you are contesting is uh, becoming so unpopular, so to speak, because of the situation of things in the country. Do you see that as something that could pose as a threat to your aspiration? No, certainly no. I agree. You know, Nigeria is a country that uh, unfortunately has become a victim of, uh, what would I put, uh, put it this way, that uh, people tend to reason for the rest of the masses. I think it's time for the, our people to start thinking and looking very constructively at those being presented to them as a candidate. The problem of, of Nigeria is not the parties. The parties are just mere expression. It is the individuals that populate the party that give these parties bad names. Um, I've been warned, I've been told, People have advised me against cho my choice of party, but I, in I invite those people to look at me clearly, you know, taking cognizance of uh, what I have done in the past, uh, stating, uh, starting with my hometown, and I know I can replicate that for the good of Delta North and Nigeria at large. Okay. That's one of the senatorial district is what you are aspiring to become a senator yes. to represent that particular constituency. And to you, you feel you are adequately qualified for that. Do you have any proud um, experience or training? Do I say training? Let me say experience as regards leadership. Yes, I have been a leader uh, all my life. You know, going back to my family structure. I grew up uh, taking very important decisions about uh, family at, uh, at an age as early as 10 because of what happened to my family during the Civil War. Both parents were ill and were debilitated. My older brother is about eight years older than me. So I found myself growing up faster than I'm supposed to have. You know, taking people to work in our farm, organizing them and getting them paid at the end of uh, the day. And uh, by the grace of God, I have held uh, positions in schools. And now I live in a country, in the United States, 
where I've had opportunity of uh, watching democracy in action and living through it. I know all the ropes. Um, I'm willing to learn some more, but uh, the basic principles I do have, and I think that is a plus for my senatorial district and uh, for Nigeria as a whole. So, seriously speaking, do you think managing your home is the same thing as managing a senatorial district? We'll take the answer to that question. We'll go on a short break. Please don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. If you are just joining us, our guest on tonight's program is no other than Mr. Smart Ajaja, all the way from the United States of America. He's an aspirant going for Dalton North Senatorial District. <laughs> I must say that's a very bold step. So, you are welcome back to the program. Thank you very much. Now, managing your home front, do you think is the same thing as managing the senatorial district? To some extent, yes. How? Uh, the reason is because in the family structure, you deal with uh, people who are distinct, with uh, different behavioral approach to everything. And uh, I've been a man who was raised in a, a stable, stable family environment, and uh, I have worked beyond that. Uh, what I did for the people of Ababo is a case in point. From 10,000 miles, I was able to mobilize the people of Ababo to dethrone a tyrant who was oppressing them for as long as 16 years. And uh, I didn't have to be physically in, to be physically there to mobilize the people to get the right and done. That is leadership. And uh, I have decided to take that beyond uh, the Ababo enclave to fight for the people of uh, Delta North Senatorial District uh, uh, about uh, the, the marginalization they have suffered, the bad leadership they have suffered for nearly 20 years of being uh, led by the wrong people. So I think I will, I'm positioned to make a huge difference, you know, with all that behind me. So you are into advocacy. I've known you for a while. I, I mean, I've observed you closely. Your work on social media, you do a lot of advocacy and activism. Um, what is your driving force? The driving force is simple. The people. The suffering people. Our people have been crushed beyond near, uh, near beyond uh, redemption. And uh, they have not had a uh, they took, stole their voices and uh, it appears that uh, the people have been so hypnotized those who should stand up for them are not standing and uh, when I came into the picture about eight years ago I started seeing the need for somebody to stand out and inspire others to start taking responsibilities for themselves and responsibility for the people of Delta North. I am happy that I'm championing the cause and there's no nothing stopping me. I am ready. I'm happy that uh, the youths are beginning to understand. They have found their voices that have been stolen. And uh, I'm so happy with the way they have supported the cause so far. I look forward to taking it to the highest level. Yeah, not talking about the youths. Our youth, I believe personally that our youths have been um, Enslaved politically for so long a time, and the time has actually come for there to be a liberation of our youth politically. How easy would that be, considering the fact that our youth are mostly unemployed? I mean, that's what appeal to their emotion with token, they just sell themselves off cheaply like that. How do you think it's going to be easy to liberate this youth politically, given um, the situation on ground that these people are jobless? What our people need, especially the youths, need is the truth. Because they have been starved of the truth about their situation and about the terrain of death or not. These people have been starved. See, if you want to enslave somebody, you make him poor. 
they have been physically impoverished and that has affected their mindset so my approach or uh, the approach we have decided to adopt because i'm not working alone anymore i'm working with a conglomerate of uh, other youths and the people who love the youths who want a better future and for who the people of your, who believe in your my course. ideology yes mm -hmm. yeah and uh, we are doing some phenomenal job in that and the response has been incredible Mm, that's true. Yes. Um, that's um, commendable. Yes. Now, let's talk about diaspora participation. I noticed recently that um, you diasporans are beginning to be m so much interested in leadership, in politics. Why? Well, the sorry state of uh, Nigeria has inspired the di diaspora to do what they are doing right now. Well, there, are, there have been people, other diasporans before my generation of diaspora uh, who came in when they came in they were not taken seriously the local politicians at home not <laughs> all of local, them is it yeah, right what? the ones in the nigeria the ones at home the, okay. the home-based politicians okay they f they created a schism they they see us as threats we are threat to the status quo they don't take us seriously they call us jokers they call us aliens they call us Belgian politicians. They call us expatriates. They come, they dispossess us of our little money, our sacrifice, our sweat that we bring to help liberate our people. When they take it, take them from us, they push us off the cliff. A lot of people have died because of that. Some people come back to lose their homes. Uh, some lose their families. Some are on the streets. This, regardless of all this, there is a new thing now coming with the diaspora that we have to fight because the reason is we pay the bills of Nigeria. In 2016, it is on record that the diaspora remitted over 30 billion dollars to Nigeria to support the Nigeria's alien economy. So we want to pursue our money and make sure that our money is being spent the way it should. That is one of the inspirations that uh, mm. got me into this race. And we will do what we have decided to do. And uh, Nigerians are beginning to see the, the, the true liberation of Nigeria must have the dias diaspora ingredient. Otherwise, we'll be joking over and over again. Okay. Mm. So you have a knowledge of all of this, that um, politics in Nigeria is no joke. And you still want to go into it? Yes because of my passion for public service and above all my love for Nigeria. Nobody can question my Nigerianness. Mm. I am first a Nigerian before the citizenship for of any other country. For how long have you been in the US now? I've been in the US for 22 years. Wow, that's quite some time. Sir, you know that leadership in Nigeria or politics in Nigeria is big business. I mean, it's a huge business. It involves a lot of capital. How prepared are you? I am prepared, very prepared. But I am not prepared the way Nigerians think. The, those who want to make biz, uh, politics a big business, I am not thinking along that line. I am thinking about providing service that provide access to opportunities to every Nigerian so that nobody will be so poor to become a beggar to anybody. This is what makes America great. And that is what I'm about. I cannot come and promise anybody that I'm going to share money the way they used to share before. I have come with the truth and I'm very confident about myself and about what I can do. It's a choice that Nigerians have to make now, either to remain in squalor or to set themselves free so that prosperity will be for everybody. Hmm. Okay. Sir, you really want to be a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Definitely so, and by the grace of God, I will be. Mr. Smart, sir, in all of these your plans, where do women come in? We take a break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. with Carrie first and it's still sad 
as smart Madwa Jaja. Mr. Smart, sir, in all of these your plans, where do women come in? Women are very, very important in nation building, and their importance cannot be overemphasized. I propose to get the women from my senatorial district involved to the extent that uh, they will be empowered to fend for themselves and their families and by extension that are not senatorial district so we can live in a healthy senate uh, that are not senatorial district and hopefully inspire other women beyond our senatorial district you know to ask the same of their representatives in where they are lacking okay yes that's commendable in the area of infrastructure what are you thinking what would you be Working on what would you be proposing? Well, you see the state of uh, the roads, for the, for instance, in Nigeria are all dead traps. And uh, I dread traveling by road in Nigeria because journeys that uh, you embark on that should take two hours end you up taking driving for five hours. That should not be. So there should be a revolution in infrastructural development in Nigeria that I will personally sponsor bills that will lead to the upgrade of our existing infrastructures while promoting vi vi virtues that will build more you know taking cognizance of the size of the country and the population of uh, the nation as it stands right now that is something that I will take very personally. Sir, if you become a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, what is the first bill that you will sponsor? The first bill that I will sponsor will be the bill that will destroy, that will the bill that will aim to destroy federal character because it's the nemesis of Nigeria. And by federal character, you mean what? Well, the character that will that makes the wrong person or put the wrong people in positions that they are not qualified to be. Uh, they're obstructing growth because they are not capacity builders and because they are not capacity utilizers. Mm -hmm. They are only uh, occupying space. In fact, that, that uh, character, federal character, is a genocidal character that has destroyed so many Nigerian heroes before they were born. That's a big one. So yes. what experience have you gotten in your sojourn in the United States of America that you intend to bring into play right here in Nigeria as a politician? Um, openness, transparency, and uh, anything and everything that has, the, that has corruption under cop. I am anti-corruption and I mean it of my bones and it is very important that we do everything if not to eradicate but to minimize corruption to the barest minimum because that's one of another nemesis of nigeria everybody is a victim and everybody is nearly involved hmm. on sir. a final note sir yes are you willing to spend your hard end dollars you got in the united states of america to become a senator of the federal republic of nigeria well, I will sacrifice as much as I can and as, as much I have been sacrificing uh, through my emotion, as you could see, through writing, through advocacy, the involvement of my money to the extent that I can tolerate without uh, having, go, having to go bankrupt the way those before me did, while also appealing to Nigerians to look away from those things that has kept Nigeria or that have kept Nigeria on the canvas. Politics is not supposed to be about money. One thing I've come to realize since I came into this aspiration is that Nigerians don't support causes. They see aspirants as money machine that they, they must make. This mentality has to change if our people 
truly want a Nigeria that will be free and that will be loaded with access to opportunities to everybody. I am appealing and the people have been really very, very, very uh, useful to my aspiration. I have seen people coming to ask me how can we help. I mean that is something very novel and I believe that uh, before the primaries that uh, things will happen mm. from what I'm seeing that will make us you know start thinking about getting involved through sacrifices and not what we gain from aspirant. No aspirant is so rich. You may wonder why some politicians switch off their phones after elections because they have paid through their nose <laughs> they had in order to get elected now they decide that they want to refund what yeah, they have spent. they want to recoup or recoup, what they right. yeah what they, they what Some they have spent. refund them they refund borrowed their, money borrowed money to banks okay i am not going to borrow money from the bank i am not going to borrow money from anybody who will choke me and prevent me from uh, serving the people the way i should so I am calling on behalf of myself and other very good aspirants that could actually make the real difference for Nigeria in this election that is very, going to be very, very crucial, you know, for the survival of our country. Thank sir, you. Sir, you, you mentioned um, the people. I can see, sir, that um, you have um, good way out there. Uh, you have um, people who actually believe in you out there. Do you think advocacy is enough or good will is enough to make you a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Yes, to a great extent. I'm a risk taker. You know, when I tell my friends that uh, I don't have that kind of big money to, you know, to run an election, they told me you are a joker. You're going to end up, you know, not going anywhere. But uh, I am telling you that a few friends have called me to recount what they have told me in the past. That uh, you guys, you are a fighter. I can't believe that you are where you are now, at the verge of making history. History will be made in this election. Mm -hmm. And uh, history will be made with the people. And uh, I am very happy with the way things are. I'm very optimistic of an outcome. Mm -hmm. I like your positive spirit, sir. Keep it up. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming on the program, Thank you. sir. I appreciate you. Yes, having. sir. So before you go, very quickly. I'd like to present you with a pocket of the Carifest magazine. These magazines are published by Carifest. Thank you very much. Um, just take this um, as a token and appreciation. I appreciate it. For coming on the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Highly honored by Thank this. you. Thank you for coming on the Thank show. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Thank you. Wow, it's been a wonderful time with uh, Mr. Smart Madu Ajaja. We've um, talked, we've chatted, questions have been asked and answers provided. Is left for the public or the, his constituency to determine if he's actually qualified to steer that ship as a senator for Delta North Senatorial Constituency. We thank you for staying with us. And on this note, I'd like to say good night till we come your way sometime next week. It's possibilities with Carrie Fest. And together, let's celebrate Africa. Good night. Thank you.